The BMAT is one of the biggest hurdles which has to be jumped to apply to medical school and it's sat during a really busy time during your schooling career. So, having a really good idea of what the BMAT is and the best plans to approach the exam will set you in good stead to smash the exam. Continue watching this video if you're sitting the BMAT this year. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name's Rohan. I finally made it to second year studying medicine at the University of Cambridge and this video is basically going to be a preparation guide for the BMAT exam. We're going to talk about the format of the exam, how it's scored, the best resources I came across, and a suggested timeline for preparing for the exam, and finally some top tips. A lot of the info covered in this video is already there in my applying to medicine document, so check that out in the video description below. Timestamps and links are also in the description box below. Anyway, let's crack on. So the BMAT stands for the Biomedical Admissions Test. It's a two hour exam sat at school, usually on the first Wednesday of November. Because it's sat at school, make sure your school registers you on time. I know the deadline's coming up close, so just be aware of that. Just to note that usually this exam is a pen and paper exam, but recently due to the COVID restrictions, they've moved it to a computerized exam. So check out the official website for more detail about the specific changes this year due to the pandemic. On the screen somewhere over there, there'll be a list of the universities which take into account the BMAT. And just know that these universities do not look at your UCAT score. So just focus on your BMAT for these universities. There are three sections to the exam. Section one is kind of harder to define, but it's similar to decision making in the UCAT exam. You get 60 minutes to answer 35 questions. 15 questions are critical thinking questions and 20 are problem solving questions. Section two is the science section. It tests all of GCSE maths, physics, chemistry, and biology. The thing with section two is it's really time pressured. You only get 30 minutes to answer 27 questions. And in contrast to UCAT, the BMAT exam is a non-calculator exam. Finally, section three involves writing an essay in half an hour from a choice of three essay titles. You only get one side of A4 to do this on. So in terms of scoring for the BMAT exam, in sections one and two, your raw mark is converted into a score between one and nine, with nine being the highest. Section three is marked differently. It's marked by two examiners, and you get a numerical score for the quality of content, and you get an alphabetical score for your use of English. The numerical score ranges from one to five, with five being the highest, and the alphabetical score ranges from A to E, with A being the highest. And the way it works is that you get an average score between both the examiners. So for example, if one examiner gives you a level three for your essay, and the other gives you a level four, your score for the essay, or for section three, is 3.5. And if there's a discrepancy greater than about two points, a third more senior examiner will mark it. And this just gives a safety net to the overall marking procedure. I've attached a marking rubric in the description box below to see how the section three is marked in more detail. So you get your BMAT score about three weeks after sitting your exam and the results come in online. And you soon hear about whether you obtained an interview at your chosen university or not a couple of days later in the case of Cambridge. And that is one of the disadvantages of sitting the BMAT, it's that you receive your results a long time after you've actually applied. So I really don't want to apply to all four BMAT universities in case it doesn't go well on the day because then you don't have a plan B. So what score should we be aiming for? Well, it obviously depends which university you're applying to, but going off the information from the Cambridge website, for sections one and two, their average applicant has a score of five excellent candidates have a score of six, and they say a few exceptional candidates will have scores in excess of seven for each of sections one and section two. And the majority of students in the essay section score a level three A or above. Therefore, I think it's sensible to aim for a score of a combined section one and two of anything above 10, and an essay score of anything three A and above. Just be aware that some universities have cutoffs for each section, so I think definitely Imperial has cutoffs. So this means you kind of have to score relatively consistently across the three sections. And be aware that I know that some colleges in Cambridge 
have different weightings for each section of the BMAT. So if you are applying to Cambridge, check your college website to check if that's the case. However, don't worry if it doesn't quite go according to plan on the day because especially if you're applying to Cambridge, they take a holistic approach to applications. So the BMAT is just one component of the whole application process. So I'm sure you're curious to know what I got. In section one, I got 5.6. In section two, I got 6.5. And in section three, I got a level 4A. So this equates to roughly the top 10% of test takers that year. Personally, I saw the BMAT as an opportunity to distinguish myself from other applicants. This is because most applicants will already have mostly eights and nines at GCSE. So I thought doing well in this exam could really boost my odds of getting invited to interview and then hopefully obtaining an offer. So next we're gonna consider some of the resources that I came across when revising for the BMAT. So many people consider the BMAT a much more preparable exam than the UCAT. Part of this is because they have tons of past papers on the official website. They have past papers right the way back to 2003, so you have hundreds of questions to practice with. Just be aware that the content might have changed slightly over the years, so make sure you're checking out the most recent past papers as the most accurate guide to what will be in your exam this year. Next. The ISC book, as ever, is always a solid resource to use when preparing and I'll put a link in the description box below. But for me, by far the most useful resource was BMAT Ninja. It's an online platform run by SixMed, which is a company founded by Ali Abdal. Some of the advantages, I think, of BMAT Ninja is that they give work solutions to all the past paper questions and these solutions are written by Oxbridge students. So this is a really useful way of learning from your mistakes and learning question specific techniques to help you boost your score. This contrasts to the official website which don't release work solutions for each question. And secondly, they give you loads of practice questions from similar admissions tests, such as the IMAT, the old specification BMAT, and the TSA, and so on. Therefore, you have so many more questions to play with, so you can use these questions in their dedicated question bank for untimed practice to really home in your skills for each question type. And their user interface is just top notch. Although it is a paid platform, I think it's worth every penny. And there are bursaries for people who are in financial hardship. The added bonus is that this year, your exam sat online. So it'd be really good to practice with some sort of computer software. So you're better prepared for this year's exam. I've also put in the description box below some useful links from the admissions test website. So make sure you let you check them out because you'd be a fool not to check out the official resource which they release. Next, we're gonna consider how best we can prepare for the BMAT exam. So personally, I found the BMAT a lot more enjoyable to prepare for than the UCAT because I felt that it was, there were no hyper weird sections such as abstract reasoning like in the UCAT. However, it still is a challenge to prepare for it because at the end of the day, it is a hard exam and you have to juggle this around your A-levels and all your UCAS application stuff. I think having a timeline of how you're going to go about preparing for the BMAT is really useful. And we're just gonna go through a suggested timeline now, which you can also find in my Applying to Medical School document. You probably wanna be starting, or you definitely want to be starting now, if you haven't already done so, but in the second half of the first half term of year 13, if that makes sense you want to start studying. And you want to set aside about an hour every day. I know this is quite hard because you're quite busy and your teachers are giving you loads of homework and stuff, but by having a dedicated time every day, perhaps it's a lunchtime at school or it's before school, having a regular time allows you just to systematically go through all the different question types for blogging gaps and knowledge if it's section two and really helps you cover all bases. In this time, it's best to focus on untimed practice, going through the question banks on BMAT Ninja or the ISC book and really homing in your skills. Just a note of warning that although you might need to turn your attention slightly away from your A-level courses during this time, don't go completely off the ball and start missing deadlines and stuff because that itself could bring in some unwanted anxiety, which is really not needed. So. Make sure you don't go completely off the boil. It's during that October half term where you usually have about 10 days off. That's when you can really go full steam ahead, doing past papers every day. I used to do a past paper every morning, then go over it, then work through the question banks in the afternoons. And you too notice that your scores will be rapidly increasing the more and more you practice. I always made sure to do the past papers under strict time conditions. So I'd get a realistic idea of what level I was at. 
and where I needed to improve. So now we're gonna go through some top tips when preparing for an exam. So my primary piece of advice is similar to the UCAT golden rule, and that is to have specific strategies for each question type which will come up in the exam. Just to give you an example, in section one, I really struggled with nets and spatial awareness. So this is actually a strategy which I got from the BMAT Ninja notes, but I took a plain rubber or plain eraser, which was kind of in a cube shape. It was more of a cuboid, but it did the job. And I was able to draw like on the rubber. That kind of helped me visualize better what potential nets that cube, which the question had, could be made from. And just another thing from section one is that most of critical thinking questions had a short piece of text, maybe about three or four sentences. But there was one really big text in each exam, which spanned like one A4 page, which related to four questions. I usually save this to the end because I'm actually quite a slow reader. So I didn't want to risk answering these questions at first and get lost in the text and start burning loads of time when I knew I could do other questions which I found easier and potentially gain more marks that way. So this is really about you knowing your strengths and weaknesses personally and adapting your strategy to the BMAT in response to that. Secondly, please work on your weaknesses because this is the most high yield way to increase your score. So if we take my section two score in 2018 as an example, if I drop two more marks, I drop below a six. But if I gain two more marks, I'm certainly shoot over seven. From this, we can learn that every single mark in the BMAT is crucial. So don't neglect a section just because you find it more tough. Also, when you're going through the past papers, make sure that you keep a list of all the mistakes that you've made in previous past papers. In this way, you can kind of start to notice if there's any patterns in the mistakes even if they seem like silly, random mistakes. For example, in the maths questions, I was always mistaking the radius with the diameter, and my final answer was usually out by a factor of two. So I was always losing a silly mark where I really didn't need to. By noting this down, I was more aware of when circle questions did come up in maths, that I should not make the silly mistake again. And finally, don't get bogged down going over content, particularly for section two. What I recommend is that you go through the assumed knowledge guide, which have linked in the description box below, and tick off all the stuff you know and highlight only the stuff that you don't know. Then focus on these topics using the official revision guide, which again, I've linked in the description box below, and then start working through past paper questions and the question banks on BMAT Ninja, for example. You physically don't have time to do a pass of all the content. And it's kind of a pointless activity because especially if you're doing A-levels in these subjects, you know 95% of it already. The official revision guide is like 400 pages long. So you really don't want to be doing that. Instead, of you want to be focusing in on your blind spots, covering them up, then moving straight onto the past papers. So that concludes this video about the BMAT and some tips for preparing for the BMAT. Stay tuned for the next video in the series where we'll be going over each BMAT section in a bit more detail and give you section specific tips. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and a thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you have any questions and I'll definitely get back to you on those. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please consider doing so to stay notified for more videos in this applying to medical school series. So take care, happy studying and bye for now.